Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I thought I'd show you how you can use morphing in M cabinet along with the modulators to come up with all sorts of cool stuff. One of the greatest things about M cabinet and M cabinet MB is the ability to actually morph between different profiles. This allows you to do all sorts of interesting things that are generally kind of hard to do and maybe require a lot of setup. But with M cabinet, it's easy. So let me show you. So I have uh, just a guitar recording here. I'll loop it. So there we have it, just something basic I recorded. What you can do from here is, obviously you see I have a profile, but this is nice, but let's say we wanted to morph between another one. And normally I'd probably use something a little bit more subtle, but just for this example, let's take something, you know, like really different so we can do some like almost like sound design stuff. I'm going to go to profile two, see right here, and now just choose whatever profile here that's already included, like a preset, or you can go into the menu and you can import your own impulse response, etc. But let's look in here and let's listen to some like this. Hopefully it doesn't clip. Let me bring it down here. Listen to what these sound like. I think this one sounds different enough. So this is the first one. And this is the old phone. Now, that's cool, but you probably want to morph between them. Let's look at the profile mixer here. This will allow us to blend between all 16 of these if we want. So I'm just going to do two, but the same thing could be done with, you know, any of the other ones. So by doing this, we move this to 100% and then move this to 0% there. You know, more between them. But I know you're thinking like, eh, this is kind of annoying doing this. So let's set up a multi-parameter that can do this for us automatically. And we'll just call this blend. And from there, we can just click learn, move this up and down, and the other one, move this up and down. Okay, so now we have our two multi-parameters. So as we move this one up, it goes from 0 to 100%, and this one I think I'll probably invert it. Now if I did this correctly, it should blend between them like this. There we go. And in fact, I actually wanted the other way. I'll do this one inverted and this one uninverted. So that way when we have it at 0, it's like this on the actual guitar speaker, and then it goes to the phone speaker. So as I play it, I'll move this and you can hear it. So this might be cool for like an intro or some part where you want that like small speaker sound and then it gets larger. I think this is really cool. If you wanted to do that with something like the whole mix and you think like, actually, I don't want like a guitar speaker. I just want, you know, nothing. Look at some of the other ones here where it's completely flat and that'll give you no processing. So you could do that if you wanted to blend between one of these like this into something else there. So there's all sorts of things you can do in that sense if you want. Uh, make sure if you're doing this blend though, that you're actually on the profile mixer like here. It's like, hey, why is nothing happening? It could be because you didn't click the profile mixer. Now you can move between them. Also, of course, you can like hook this up to some type of automation in your DAW. Uh, I'll show you how to do that if you really want to. This will, of course, be dependent on your own DAW. Uh, some of them have this. Some of them don't actually have quite as many. Ugh, I have way too many multi-parameters here for M Turbo Amp and everything. Reaper actually shows you just about everything. So this can be sometimes daunting. Let me find it in here. M cabinet, 
Oh no, I have too many. That's okay. Here, multi perimeter one, like that. Blend. Then just look on here and add a node, insert point, insert a point at the beginning. Actually, insert something I didn't want to insert. Just insert the point. And then just drag it up. Unfortunately, because this will probably end in discontinuity, it might sound weird switching b between it, but let's find out. It switches really quickly, which sometimes that, you know, doesn't sound so good, but maybe it is what you want. So you can kind of do that however you want uh, for this. Take this off. There's other ways to do this also. If you don't want to do it through your DAW through automation, like, wow, there's too many parameters there. This is complicated. Or maybe you think, I want to do this every single time. I don't want to have to draw this, you know, a million times in my DAW. What you can do is use a modulator. Now we can just use this, click learn, go to blend like that. Make sure when you're using this that it's on. So now it's off. I click on there and it starts moving. And I have it using a sine wave. If I want to sync this to tempo, sync it there and sync or check the length. I'll do one bar here. Now this is going up and down between them with a sine wave, but I may not want that. Let's say I want something like this where it starts here and goes down. So now it should be a one bar. Uh, saw wave so it should just decrease over time like this there you go i noticed it seems like it's starting a little bit early and one of the reasons for that is the phase it's starting at 90 degrees off so we'll be starting a quarter note early just set this to zero like this That's not great. I probably want to make this longer, like two bars. But uh, let's try it one more time. Now, this I think is okay, but we can do more with this. Let's say, like, ah, this is kind of boring. What I think might be better is using the step sequencer. Now, what we can do here is just go into the step sequencer and edit it. Let's see here. Like this. And so the last two parts or the last, I guess, beat or two beats will have it at a different value here. And maybe if I don't want it moving quite so fast, I'll try smoothing it just a little bit like this. Let's hear it. <laughs> And you can do all sorts of things with that. You can move this around, so here, like this. So you can have all sorts of fun with that and use that in a lot of different ways. You can also do it uh, depending on the volume. So this one probably isn't a good example just because it's distorted, but you can actually track the volume. So if it plays uh, very, let's say loudly, you can get it to change between these, which is cool. You can also have it move randomly between there, which probably isn't gonna sound good. Or you can somewhat do it with pitch, but Again, this example isn't good because this needs to be monophonic audio instead of chords, but it is possible. So there's all sorts of fun and interesting things we can do with this. So play with this yourself 
and have lots of fun with it. I tried to do, you know, two completely different examples with this old phone and the uh, actual, like, guitar cabinet, but you can do it with anything, and not just with guitars. You could use, you know, IRs from any kind of source that, uh, you know, sounds good. So I hope this gave you some ideas of things you can do and play around with. Uh, if you have any questions, leave those down below. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up and check out all the other plugins at MeltaProduction.com. Till next time, see you.